Good morning, Richard. We're so happy to be in here with you. And let me just tell you why we're here. The Word of God says, let's encourage one another, right? In songs and songs. And so we're here to encourage you. So if you've come and you need some encouragement, are y'all ready to take them some?
the righteous look at him and they say, well, Jesus, we don't understand. When did we ever see you hungry and give you something to eat? When did we ever see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we ever see you sick and go and visit you? When did we ever see you in prison and go and visit you? And he goes down that list. When, when did we ever see you needing clothes and, uh, and give you clothes to wear? And Jesus says that when you did it for one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it unto me. And that is a powerful message. We don't earn our salvation. But when we are saved, we not only fall in love with God, but we learn to love our neighbor as ourselves. We begin not only to take care of our needs, that's a normal thing, but we reach out and we help others that are in need. And God is a God is an awesome God. We love our neighbor as ourselves. It shows God that we love Him. And uh, well, I quoted that pretty well without finding it here. So. <laughs> you know what we read the last two weeks, so uh, uh, we won't, I won't go through and. Uh, and read that again. If I find the scripture, then I would be tempted to read it again. I don't want to do that. Uh, but I would like to read to you a scripture found over in James about faith. Uh, this, in fact, the matter, the scripture I'm going to read to you all, almost causes the book of James not to be put in the canon. There were some people that read it, didn't understand what James was saying, thought he was saying that we need to earn our salvation, which he's not saying at all. James, the brother of Jesus, if anyone understood the heart of Jesus, it was James. James is very practical, very down to earth. It's where the rubber meets the road. It, he, he's, and he's, he speaks very clearly. Now, I'm going to read to you a scripture in the second chapter of James. And I realize our time is short today, so I'm going to just, well, the second service I can go into a little more detail. Today, first service will be a little more concise, a little shorter. Uh, second chapter of James, starting with verse 14. James chapter 2, beginning with verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or without daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, oh, I wish you well. Keep warm and be well fed, <laughs> but does nothing about his physical needs. <laughs> what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good. <laughs> Even the demons believe that and shudder. Why, you foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? So see that his faith and his actions, they were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does, and not by faith alone. 
In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Inspired. So we thank you for the awesome word of God. We thank you that we have your spirit, the Holy Spirit, which you sent to teach us all truth. We pray, God, today that you will reveal to us truth from the word of God. That we'll go out of the building today saying it was good to be in the house of God. The word of God spoke to my heart. It was good to be in the house of God today. Bless the reading of the word. Teach us something special, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. James was not making a false claim that you could earn your salvation. That's not what he's talking about at all. But he is saying that when you actually have faith in God, remember what the scripture says, it is by grace, through faith, that you're saved. You're saved by having faith in God, and it's the grace of God that saves you. Because you can't earn your own, you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't do it. You have to come to God the way you are, and you have to confess that you have messed up, you have sinned, you have done wrong, and you are sorry for that, and you ask God for mercy to forgive you, and He does. But what James is trying to say is, when you have faith in God, it will manifest itself after you're saved by what you do and what you're involved in. Now, frankly, I'm around a lot of people who claim to have Christ in their heart. But I never see them excited about the Lord. I never see them involved in anything that is special for the Lord. I never see it. Now, I'm not going to judge them. Certainly not. But I know this. When I gave my heart to the Lord, my attitude changed. The direction I was going changed. What I wanted to read changed. What I wanted to be involved in changed. What I was possessed by changed. God got a hold of my heart. And I wanted people to know that. I wanted people to know what God had done for me. And I just couldn't keep my mouth shut. When God makes you a new person, I'm going to tell you, it's going to ooze out of your pores one way or another and touch people's lives. I've often said it's like going over here by this fountain over here when it's got water coming out of it in the summertime and the wind's blowing. You get anywhere near it, you're going to get wet. Okay? That's the way it is when you're around a Christian. It's infectious. It's like COVID. Even wearing a mask, it's going to get through, okay? When you are a Christian and you're around folks, there is something that happens and they're going to want what you have. It's just the way it is. When you get near Christ, when you get near God, you're going to have the reflection of the light of God on your life and people will see God from you. You remember when Moses went up to the mountain to be with God and he got the Ten Commandments? You remember when he came down to the mountain? It, it, it says in the scripture, he didn't see God, but he was near God. He was so near God that the reflection of light, literally, the Shekinah glory lit him up. And when he came down, they couldn't look at him. He had the glow of God on him. You get close to God, you're going to have the Shekinah glory, the, the glow of God around you, and people will feel it, and they will see it. 
What you're involved in tells you a lot about your faith. Jesus talks about what's important to us. He says, where your heart is, what's he say about that? Where your heart is, that's where your, a lot of times he says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Then he changes it around. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. What is important to you is what you will focus on and what you will be a part of in your life. And what you will be excited about in your life. I challenge you as a Christian. Read your day devotion. Read your scripture. Get into a Bible class where your schedule allows it. Or get a, an online study if you have to. Or get into one of the classes here that we have on Wednesday night. You know, we had to move our Bible study on Sunday morning to Wednesdays to have enough classrooms. But we've got some great Bible studies here. April is doing a wonderful job with the women right now. And uh, you ladies that have time uh, during the week, you ought to check that out. Or check precepts out on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. Awesome study that they're doing. Or come on Wednesday night to a Bible class that we're having. We just finished uh, the book of 1 Timothy. This week we start the book of 2 Timothy. And uh, it, it, it's awesome instruction that the Apostle Paul gave Timothy as a young preacher on what he should be involved in, what he should teach, what he should share. And, and it's, it is an exciting study. And of course, although it's directed to Timothy, it's really directed to all of us. We're all part of the body of Christ. Now, back to this scripture that I read. Faith without deeds or without works, James says, is dead. He says if you have Christ in your heart, the natural thing that will happen is you'll be involved and you'll do things for the kingdom of God. You don't do those things to try to earn your salvation, but they happen because you love the Lord. I remember the story where the four men had a friend that had been uh, well, a paraplegic for many years. 30 something years he had not been able to walk or do anything for himself. He was uh, just laid around on the pallet. And they had heard word that Jesus was going to be in town. In fact, he was going to be a rich person's house. And he was going to be sharing uh, the truth about the kingdom of God with these Jewish leaders. And they wanted to get their friends to Jesus. Well, the only time you find the Bible where Jesus actually did what I would call a seminar for pastors or for ministers. Uh, and he did it in a house. And so they got a house that was very large, so it would hold a lot of people, and they got Jesus there. And there was Jesus in the center of the house, and he was starting to teach these guys. There was so much interest, and the word had gotten out that all these important men had come, filled the house full. They had the windows open, the doors open, and then the yard outside of the house was jam-packed with people. These men were coming over there to try to get their friend to Jesus, and as he got near the house, there was no way in the world they were going to get him inside the house. The house was packed. And so the scripture says, when they saw that the house and the yard was packed and they couldn't get their friend in, it doesn't say that they turned around and left and said, oh, well, we tried. It says that they began to try to figure out a way to get him to Jesus. And I don't know which one of these four men was an engineer, but it appears that somebody was an engineer, calculated angles and whatever, figured out where that roof was. It was kind of a, a thatched roof with tile and found out a place he could dig a hole in. Now, you go to somebody that's rich and you get up on the roof and start tearing a hole in the, in the roof of their house, you're probably going to have someone call the authorities and they're going to come up and arrest you thinking you're out of your mind. They were up there trying to get their friend to it. And 
if you have somebody trying to lure somebody down on a pallet with ropes on the corners, uh, they're going to call Cal OSHA or OSHA because you've broken every regulation that there is. But these men got on that roof, they didn't care that they made noise, they didn't care that dirt and stuff fell in there where Jesus went, they didn't care that they disturbed the service, they didn't care. They had a purpose. Bring their friend to Jesus. I love that. And Jesus stopped. And he looked up. And he saw them digging a hole in there. And he saw this pallet with this crippled man on it with four ropes on the four corners and began to lower him down. And the scripture says Jesus saw their faith. That's always been a scripture that has got my attention. He saw their faith. Now faith is invisible. But actions show you somebody's faith. The fact that they were willing to take a risk and they wanted to get their friend to Jesus and they believed that Jesus could make a difference showed Jesus their faith. And as they were lowering him down, Jesus said he saw their faith and then he told them, because of your faith, of the group of them's faith, he said, your sins are forgiven. Now Jesus did that on purpose. He knew that they were there to have their friend healed. But Jesus was going to start out and show them how he could forgive someone's sin because he could heal their body. He could heal their spirit. And they said, well, wait a minute. How come you're saying you can forgive somebody? Who can forgive somebody except God? And then Jesus said to the crippled man, he said, to show that I have the power to forgive sins, get up and take your pallet and go home. And the man got up. His legs were strengthened. He was healed instantly. And he rolled up his pallet and began to praise God. Well, what happened in that story? Well, I can tell you what happened. What happened was there were some men there that had faith. And their faith was shown to the whole room and to Jesus by what they did. You see the point? What they did, their deeds, their action, show the faith that they had. You know, as I've gotten older, I've realized more and more the things I'm involved in are very important. You know, my life is not getting any longer. It's getting shorter. It's getting shorter. You know, like your life goes by faster when you get older. I don't know. Is that true, Gladys? Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you, Gladys. She's my buddy. Uh, you, but the clock seems to go faster whenever you get older. You know what Phil Hensley did to me one time? He had me go get a tape measure. And he had me put it down at my feet and bring it up to 73 inches. And I looked at that and he says, well, for a man right now, the average age that they live is 73. And at that time I was at 67. He said, wow, your life's about shot, is what he's told me. <laughs> you don't have much to go. I never forgot that. I looked at that and I'm thinking, he's right. There isn't much to go. But you know what? The time that I have left to go, I want to go out not rusting out. I want to go out burning out. I want to be flaming for the Lord. I want to be seeing people saved. I want lives changed. I want to have some action. I may be slower than I used to be. I may not speak as fast as I used to speak, and I used to speak really fast too when I was when I was young. I had a sudden draw with a uh, like a singer song machine, but I had I, I, I that's what they put me. Like, but I've kind of lost that now. But uh, I, I don't speak as fast as I used to. But you know what? I don't run as fast as I used to. But I know this: 
I love the Lord more than I miss you. And I want, I want my faith to shine to others that they will see what God has done in my heart and the change that he has made in me. And that's what I want for every one of you. If we're not careful, we drift away from the, the closest, closest we have with God when we first give our heart to the Lord, and we begin to kind of cool off. The only way you could not be cool is to get near the flame, get near the fire, get close to God. He has a donut in our brains. And we need to remake that commitment to God. God, I'm getting a few years old. I want to get close to you, and I want people to know when they're around me that I love the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's all stand together, and we'll, we'll sing a song. We'll bring Randy back up here with the group, and we'll sing the song together. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for just a moment. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions while we get ready to sing. One of them is this. Every head bow, every eye closed, but I'm going to look around. Just going to ask you a couple of quick questions. Number, number one is this. How many of you would say, Pastor Jim, pray for me. I want to get closer to Christ. And I want my heart to be on fire for him. Yes, yes. Oh, this means I can't count. All right, thank you. Now, how many of you would say this? Lord, during my lifetime, the time that I have left, I want to be a person who makes a difference in those lives. Would you pray for me? Yes. Now, last question. Is there anybody here that would say today, the Lord has been talking to my heart. He's been asking me to be involved in areas and ministries. I'm afraid. I need God to really make it clear for me. Would you pray for me? Anybody? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. Lord, I pray for these ones that have raised their hand. Lord, when we raise this hand to a room when no one's looking around, we know that you're watching and you're, you're hearing every word and you're seeing what we're doing. Lord, answer these people's prayer requests today for we pray them in the mighty and the awesome and the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
ask me, how do you know if the Lord's talking to your heart? You'll know. There's a tug, there's a there's a pull. Sometimes it feels like an itch you can't scratch. You know when God's talking to your heart. You know. Some of you here today, the Lord's been speaking to your heart. And you know it. Not a question mark. You know it. But only you can make that step out of faith and say yes. Nobody else can do it for you. We have great old-fashioned altars here. It's a great place to come and just kneel and meet God. If you want someone to pray with you, we have prayer partners that will pray with you. But there's some folks here today I know. The Lord is dealing with you, dealing with you about several different things. I challenge you on this last verse. If God is speaking to you today, challenge you to step out by faith and say yes to God. You come if the Lord has been speaking to your heart.
Are we truly with you and the things that I'd like to don't belong there? And so, Lord, let's give those things up and repent and come back to you. And Lord, may you empower us, strengthen us throughout this week, and bless all those here at the altar today, Lord. Meet them with, at the point of their needs, Lord. Encourage them, strengthen them, and strengthen all of us, Lord. And may you bless us most richly, as you always do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.